Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. This week, we have lawsuits. <laughs> Lots of lawsuits happening for false advertising in the cosmetic industry. We know at this point that companies can pretty much make any claims that they want about their products, but we have class action lawsuits that are popping up saying, no, no, <laughs> that's not real. What you're saying that that does, it doesn't really do that. And if you aren't tuned into the beauty space here on YouTube or on Instagram, you may actually believe these claims, and that's what the these lawsuits are about are about holding brands accountable for the claims they make on their packaging. We will get into that in just a moment. We are also going to get into, when we get into the product report, the plethora of blurring products. It is the thing right now to come out with a product that is like a faux filter for your face. So many products, but do they actually work? That's what I wonder. Hang tight. We are getting into all of that right now. I am honestly quite surprised that it took this long for a makeup company to be sued over their sunscreen claims. We talk about it a lot here. I know some other YouTubers talk about it as well. As far as sunscreen claims on makeup products, and L'Oreal is getting hit right now with a class action lawsuit because some of their products make it kind of look like that the sunscreen that is in the products will last for 24 hours. Let me know what you think. Here's the photo from the lawsuit of the products in question. The lawsuit has problems with specific claims on specific L'Oreal products. So we're talking about the up to 24H Fresh Wear, up to 24HR, and then they have the claims about their SPF right underneath that. And what they're saying is, if you see something that says 24H or 24HR, you're going to think that means hours, and you're going to assume that that means the product will, as a whole, perform for that long of a period of time. That it's not just about the coverage of the product, but also the sunscreen claims as well. And if you know about sunscreen, you know that sunscreen does not last on the skin for 24 hours, that it needs to be reapplied. The brand has tried to cover themselves with this no pun intended, in that they do say on there that the SPF does need to be reapplied, but what they do is they hide it underneath the label and the lawsuit is saying that you shouldn't have to peel up the label in order to see that information. It should be more prominent on there or they need to change the way that they are structuring their packaging labeling so that it's more clear that it's not the SPF that lasts for 24 hours, that maybe it's just the coverage of the foundation. And this is the same issue that Huda Beauty had had. Do you remember that lawsuit about Huda Beauty's pigments that they were not FDA approved for eye use? And then you had to peel the sticker up and then you would see underneath there that certain pigments in the neon palettes were not safe for eye use according to the FDA. It was the same thing. Huda Beauty ended up settling that one and ended up doing a big payout and all of that. Said they didn't do anything wrong, but still ended up doing a big payout. And I have a feeling that's the same thing that's going to happen with this. The parameters of the lawsuit say that they're looking to cover residents in California who purchased any of these products since December of 2018. All of the links that you need for this episode are going to be in the description box. So if that's you, it's going to be there. With a lot of these lawsuits, the question is, do you think that customers should know better? Do you think this should be pretty obvious? Or do you feel like this makes people at risk for melanoma? I tend to believe the latter. I don't think that everybody would assume that the 24 hour means the makeup and not the SPF. I don't feel like everybody has that background knowledge about reapplying SPF. I just don't. So that's just where I land on it, but I would love to know what you think down in the comments. The second lawsuit isn't as serious, but it is still false advertising in my opinion. So what is happening is it is a lawsuit against Aveda that may be happening. It's not actually happening yet. Here it is. The attorneys working with classaction.org are investigating whether Aveda's claims that products can repair hair are false 
and misleading because hair is dead. It is not alive. Therefore, it cannot be repaired. Physically, scientifically, hair cannot be repaired. What it can be is it can be smoothed, the damage can be hidden, all of those things, but it really cellularly cannot be repaired. So where this stemmed from, where this came from, is that the lawyers were looking around on review websites and they saw people that were buying these Aveda hair products and they were like, like, no, my hair was not repaired, and I paid a ridiculous amount of money for these products. And I'm very disappointed. I wasted my money on this. The products promise to, quote, repair all three layers of hair. I don't know what that is. I'm not a hair person, but I'm, you know, I, I'm assuming the hair has three layers. I don't know. See, this is why we need lawsuits against false advertising, because I don't even know what that means. I'll just Google it after I finish filming. The other claim is that it has instant repair. Just like the other lawsuit, if you're looking to join this one, link is down below. Question for you. Do you know who the richest person in the world is? I did not know. I don't really pay much attention to these kinds of things, to be honest with you. Uh, but I learned that it used to be Elon Musk until he made an investment that was not so great. <laughs> <laughs> and now he is not the richest person in the world. And the reason why we're talking about it here on What's Up in Makeup is because the richest person in the world is now a man named Bernard Arnold. And if you've never heard of that dude, most people probably haven't, but you have probably heard of his company that he is the CEO of. It is called LVMH. And if you've never heard of LVMH, you've probably heard of Sephora because L LVMH owns Sephora along with a bunch of other companies. Outside of the makeup space, they own Tiffany & Company, Dom Perignon, and Fendi. Inside the beauty space, they own Benefit, they own Fresh, they own KVD Beauty, Fenty Beauty, and of course, the entirety of Sephora itself. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I believe that you should work hard and make money, and you should be able to keep that money. Like, I believe that. I think that that's important. But at the same time, the amount of money this man has could not be spent in multiple lifetimes. Like we could get to year 3,242 and his grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren would still be just fine with the $190.7 billion that this man has. It is obnoxious. I feel like at that point... There's the only reason to have that much money is bragging rights. That's it. Just to be able to say you're the richest person in the world while people are starving to death. If you are curious how he is earning this money, well, you probably already know, but the data says that in the first quarter of 2022, the brand recorded revenue of $19.5 billion. That's up 29% from this time in 2021. I just, you know, it's, it's, that's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But it just goes to show that the makeup space is not going anywhere. Luxury products are going nowhere. People are still buying it and they're making the people at the top very, very, very rich. I have one more question for you before we move into the product report, and it has to do with eco-friendly packaging. How likely are you to choose a product based on how eco-friendly the packaging is? We are very hyper-vigilant here on What's Been Makeup to not promote greenwashing, meaning that it looks like it's gonna be eco-friendly, but it actually isn't. This one actually looks like it might be, really and truly, more eco-friendly, but it's just a packaging design at this time that we're probably going to see more of in 2023, so I wanted to mention it to you. It is a company called Null Ecoform, and they've designed these new palettes. I'm gonna show you a sample of one right here, but they can be formed to be any shape that the company wants. They can do any design, all of that. They're made from bamboo, wood, and sugar cane fibers, and it seems like it's probably a more luxe form of cardboard. Like, it's supposed to feel really nice, but it is, essentially like a 
cardboard. There are no magnets, the mirror is removable, but the kicker on this is that there are no pans in there to hold the product. And this is what I'm thinking. I think it's a genius idea, but I worry about more emollient products going into these pans that don't have actual pans. They're just a well because of this one product that I own. Right back when Glamlight first started, I bought this burger palette from them. They were just known for like their pizza palette and their burger palette. And then they came out with the taco palette. This was the burger palette. It is so freaking cool until you open it and you see this. And it is like a greasy burger on the inside. It's gross looking because the emollient shadows that are in here, for whatever reason, sunk into the cardboard and made it look wet and greasy and disgusting. Let me swatch a couple of these for you so you can kind of see the texture of the ones that kind of bled into the packaging. I'll just kind of swatch these right here. Now, this is a very old palette, so I don't think they're as pigmented as they once were, but they're not even that foiled compared to some of the other foiled shadows that are on the market today. So that's my biggest concern. That's my biggest worry about this kind of product is that it's not going to be able to house certain kinds of very, very popular formulas that are more emollient. So we will have to see, but I'm curious to see what you think of this, if it can withstand these, you know, more wet formulas, would you be more likely to buy a product like this? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. All right, my friend, let us move on to the product report. It is the season of blur. <laughs> Apparently, we are all about the filters in the makeup space, and we want our face to actually look like a filter in real life. Therefore, brands are marketing to people who want that. And in reality, let's just be real here. Your face will never look like a filter. Ever. Mine won't either. None of our faces are going to look like a filter. These are here. My wrinkles are here <laughs> and they're not going anywhere unless I get Botox. That's what it comes down to. I can buy things that may minimize them a little bit, but they're going to be there. So let us put on our logic filter as we learn about some of these new products where brands are trying to get us to purchase them. Too Faced is coming out with a cloud crush blush that is supposed to be a blurring blush. And I will admit that the photo of these looks absolutely beautiful and it really does look blurred. And I'm very curious whether this will look the same on someone with relatively large pores. I would highly doubt it, but they do look very pretty. They're $29 each. There's going to be five different shades. So we will see about that. The other thing that Too Faced is launching is a pinker times ahead eyeshadow palette. It's $42. They do say that it smells like a cotton candy sunset, whatever that means. I, I, does it smell like cotton candy or does it smell like a sunset? <laughs> it, the wording of it makes it so, say it smells like a sunset. So that's definitely very different. I would imagine it smells like cotton candy though. I'm just being ridiculous. Let's move on. <laughs> to more ridiculousness happening over at ColourPop. This is actually a really pretty collection though. This is the Pretty Police collection. It is doll themed. Uh, there's an eyeshadow palette. There's three lip crumbs, three color sticks, and three serum blushes. Usually they have a bundle that has all of them in there. I didn't see that available. They do have a lip crumb bundle that's $24 for all three. The palette's 18, the color sticks are seven, and the individual lip crumbs are $9 each. Going back to the whole filter thing, Tarte is launching their Glow Light Skin Filter. It is $30. There are only four shades. They do look like a relatively nice gradient. I think that they're supposed to be low coverage and when we have a less coverage product. We don't necessarily need as big of a gradient because your skin is going to shine through. It just needs to match sort of. So we'll have to see whether this works for everybody. As part of the advertising, they say get glowing skin in seconds with this glow filter in a bottle to smooth, blur, and illuminate. And what is concerning for me about things like this is when you illuminate, usually you accentuate texture. So you're blurring, smoothing, and illuminating. So I'm very curious how this is going to work. We will see. NYX also is releasing a blurring product. It is the Bear With Me Blur Tint Foundation. It's $14, 24 shades. This has a very, very nice gradient going on here. They say it is a tint foundation that blurs it all. Skin so smooth, better than a filter. Not just the same as a filter. Not just will look like you have a filter. It better than a filter. Come on, NYX, really? No, it's not. I don't care. It's not going to be. It's not, unless you're 
face is as smooth as a baby's butt, it's not going to be. <laughs> it's just not. I actually am very curious about this. I almost bought it, but I was like, I'm not going to buy it off the NYX website. I'll wait till it gets to Ulta. I'll do an Ulta haul and maybe we'll try it then. This, I'm pretty sure that Kaleidos is sending me in PR. Very excited about one of the two sets. We'll see what happens. This is the Sound of Winter collection. There's two sets of cloud lip clays, four lip clays in each set. Those are $35 per set. Their Polar Placid is the one that I think will match me really well. I really like cool tone brown shades, so I'm excited about this. And then they have Willow Wisp, which is the less natural looking shades. You can get both sets and a display case for $90 if you want to do that, or I think I said they're $35 each. And an announcement from Menagerie Cosmetics. They are going to stop selling their single shadows. In their Instagram post, they were like, we have so many single shadows floating around. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. We have so many single shadows and so many skews for all these single shadows. Because I think with every palette, they were also keeping the singles and allowing you to buy them as individuals. And they're just like, I, we can't do it anymore. We're done. We cannot do this anymore. This is out of control. So what they're going to do is they're going to just focus on their palettes for the most part. But they're not going to keep uh, all of the singles. They are going though going to still sell their specialty pigments in multi-chromes as singles. It's just kind of the other random shades that are just kind of lying around. So if you're looking for menagerie singles, you might want to jump on that now before they stop selling them. Moving over to Sephora, just one thing that's available only at Sephora. There's quite a few things that are available Ulta and Sephora. We'll get to those in a second. But the Sephora exclusive one is from Rare Beauty. It's their Positive Light Under Eye Brightener. $24 does come in six shades. They say it is a super lightweight liquid that visibly brightens, hydrates, and awakens under eyes with sheer flexible coverage for a fresh look in a flash. It is listed, at least as of filming, as coming soon. So I, I think it looks very interesting. I would love to see reviews on this I don't think I'm going to purchase it just because I feel like you know an under eye brightener isn't that just a concealer that's a little bit too light for your skin tone I don't know and if, if it's shiny I don't know if I want shiny under my eyes you know what I'm saying I don't know I can't wait to see somebody try this though. Now let's talk about the things available at Sephora and Ulta. And I forgot that Fenty is available at Ulta, which I think is weird because remember we talked about in top news about that LVMH owns Sephora. They also own Fenty and that Fenty was a Sephora exclusive and now they sell Fenty and KVD Beauty over at Ulta. It's it's an odd choice, but I'm sure there's money to be had there. And I think this is gonna be one that people are gonna be real excited about. So this is the Navy collection gorgeous art here like I can't even stand how gorgeous this art is it's just blue it's beautiful it's gorgeous it's a five-piece lip eye and accessory set it's $58 they say it's a limited edition set of navy crew essentials featuring a Fenty icon lipstick fill and a case an eyeliner in a new shade it's a navy blue and a mirror and a makeup bag also available at Ulta and Sephora, we have a huge drop from Tarte. Uh, we'll continue with a few products just exclusive to Ulta, but this is what's available at both places. We have the Tartlet Energy Amazonian Clay Palette. Now, this has been at Ulta's website for a while. It's now over at Sephora. There's 12 shades and it's 45 bucks. There's also the Tartlet Spark Amazonian Clay Palette, six shades there, $25. And then the Amazonian Clay Blue blurring powder foundation now just as a heads up though it is mislabeled as a filming uh, on the sephora website they have it listed as the eyeshadow palette so if you're looking for this product over at sephora make sure you just just search for tart and then scroll through until you find it because it's not labeled properly it's 39 dollars. does come in 21 shades again really nice gradient here uh, they say it is a blurring powder foundation with hyaluronic acid like a filter in a compact for up to 16 hours of flawless skin. Just as an FYI also about this product is that some of the shades are sold out over at Ulta, but they seem to be fully stocked over at Sephora. They also have the Maracuja Juicy Lip Cremes, eight shades there, $24. A Tribrid Lip Balm, Lipstick, and Lip Treatment. And yeah, that's a lot. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> and then they have the Maracuja Juicy Lip Liner. Those are $20, six peachy shades there, a Juicy Lip liner with again hyaluronic acid for fuller plumper juicier looking lips let us continue with the tart over at Ulta so we have the travel size products that are available just at Ulta the Maracuja juicy lip creme that's only two shades there $13 
the travel size shape tape setting powder $16 two shades available for that and then the smooth operator Amazon and clay finishing powder for 16 bucks uh, they're marked as new I didn't realize that the the finishing powder was uh, the travel size was new but they are saying it is and then the last thing that they have that's exclusive to Ulta from Tarte that's brand new is the make sparks fly must have set it's $29 as I was looking at that I took a note that the eyeshadow palette the little one is sold out over at Ulta so if you want to get it from Ulta you kind of have to get this but it's kind of a good deal so you get the spark Amazon and clay eyeshadow palette and you also get a mini tubing mascara in black and a mini juicy lip balm in rose and it's only $29 so the palette by itself is 25 so you're essentially getting those two bonus things for four dollars which I think is a pretty good good deal if you are looking for the eyeshadow palette you may want to just pop over to Ulta and get all of that but you just have to decide whether that four dollars it's worth it to you or not another big drop of this time from Milani we have the gilded mini eyeshadow palettes $9.99 each five different color choices these actually do look pretty nice I mean look at the gold in this one gorgeous this this uh one is called champagne problems absolutely stunning on the gold there really gorgeous they also launched the conceal and perfect blur out powder $12.99 again with the blur it's just the thing they say it's universally flattering but I would love to see somebody without this skin tone try this out and tell me whether it's universally flattering because a lot of times these things really need pigment in order to do what they advertise to do so I don't know we'll just have to see they also have the stay put liquid brow wax 10.99 and it says it has up to 16 hours of hold there and then this one's very exciting this is the highly rated lash extensions tubing mascara it's 13.99 uh, I love me a good tubing mascara if you've never tried one they're they're really cool so what it does is it puts like a coating over your lashes instead of like a mushy it's like a coating so when you wash your makeup off at the end of the day all you need to do is take warm water and it just goes bloop and it, your your mascara just like comes off in clumps instead of mushing all over your eyes so they're they're kind of fun and also if mascara smudges on you tubing mascaras are a great option because they they're not wet still on your eyes they're not like a mushy goo on your eyes they're like a solid so I'm I'm definitely looking at that one as a possible future purchase I think CoverGirl's kind of lost their mind on this one a little bit this is the clean fresh clean color eyeshadow did they have to use clean twice did they have to I'm just annoyed already. <laughs> And I like CoverGirl, I'm, but I'm annoyed. $13.99. I'm even more annoyed about this. $13.99 for four pans. Are you kidding me, CoverGirl? Are you kidding me? They've lost their minds. Half that. Half that, CoverGirl. There's nine color choices. Most of them look super boring. This better be the best freaking drugstore eyeshadow formula of all time. $13.99 for four pans. You've lost your mind, clean, clean. Lost your mind. It's terrible, terrible. But to put you back in a good mood, here's the Creme Shop Karomi. Hopefully I said that correctly. Fortune Collection. Two different macaron lip balms, 10 bucks each. And then the Hello Kitty and Friends, my Lucky Star printed sheet mask. Also $10. You do get three masks in the set. I thought it was going to be like a Hello Kitty. Like, so you, when you put on the mask, Hello Kitty would be your face. But those are also kind of creepy. So I kind of like this better. Just a little bit. <laughs> Okay, here we go. PR or purchase product of the week. I did get from ColourPop the Aurora Struck collection. And I have a question for you because I'm thinking about doing this in the new year. Because I'm getting so much ColourPop PR, would you find it helpful if I did like a swatch video where once a month I took all of the new palettes that I got or whatever, like new things, and I just did a swatch video where I just showed you all of the stuff. So it could be like a ColourPop exclusive exclusive thing or maybe like other brands that I got I don't know it would probably take a while to produce but I think it might be worth it just to show you the things that I'm getting because I feel like I'm not showing you enough of the things that I'm getting but let me show you this because this is beautiful it's what I'm wearing on my eyes today I wore this on my eyes yesterday and what I found in the purple corner purple pink corner over here is that I felt like you know in the mirror down here I felt like they were really 
really punchy and purple, but when I went upstairs out of my lighting, they weren't as punchy as I hoped that they would be. Like they were just a lot more subtle, a lot more subdued. And I feel like the blue side, I haven't really played in the greens much, but what I'm wearing today, I feel like is a little bit more punchy. Like this guy right here, this one, Great Earth. <gasps> this thing is beautiful. Look at this. That's what's in the middle of my lids. Like, are you serious right now? How perfect is that? That's what I have like here. And let me actually, let me do take a second and just do a little bit of swatching of the shades that I have on my eyes today so you can see them. Man, these swatches are coming off so weak compared to the way that they were on the eyes. Let me double swatch. I'm gonna swatch some of these other blue ones. I had done like a really super smoky eye and then I ended up wimping out. <laughs> I had used these shades on my eyes and I wimped out. I was like, I can't, I can't with this. I, I was too nervous <laughs> to have like a really dark smoky eye. So I ended up taking it off and replacing it with this more me look. So on the end are some of the shades that I had used in that look that I just wanted to show you. Actually, I haven't swatched some of these greens. Let me swatch some of the greens because they're really pretty. Oh my gosh, <gasps> that's gorgeous. Let me do some of the purples. I'm just having too much fun. I can't stop. So there's some more. Just ignore that last one. That was a mess up but really, really beautiful. And then for my highlight today, I used one of their light sticks. Uh, there's, they're actually quite different, all of them. This one's really pretty. Let's, let's put it right here. So that's full opacity, but then you can blend it out and kind of see what happens as you blend it. It still has an iridescence to it, but it's not real obnoxious. It's right here, it's not obnoxious. And then I made a little purchase over at Wet n Wild. I was so excited about that eyeliner from Favorites and Fails last month. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a little purchase. I'm gonna buy another eyeliner before the holiday season is over. And I'm gonna buy a couple other things to try. So this is what's on my face today. This is the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. And this is in the shade Light Medium. And I found that you can build it up to a light coverage. I didn't think it could go up to medium. It advertised as medium, but I think light is about as full coverage as you're gonna get on this. I did put a little concealer under my eyes because I wanted to, but the coverage is what you can see here. I also noticed, I tried to capture it on video in that you would think that a product called a tinted hydrator would hydrate dry spots, but I had some dryness on the side of my nose that was definitely accentuated by this product it didn't hydrate it at all so hopefully you can see that in the clip that I'm showing you right now but this is a first impression so I'm gonna keep using that uh, what was a little bit better of an experience was the eyebrow pencil that I purchased this is the micro brow pencil it is very very tiny and I really liked it a lot right there very tiny in the tip there and I'm just gonna swatch it here just so you can see Bloop, right there very tiny, very easy to draw little uh, brow hairs and it was it blended out beautifully. It's a great brow pencil. Very, if you like drawing little teeny tiny hairs, like this is perfect. No problems with smudging, with it being too soft. No problem with it being too hard where you gotta like scrub, scrub, scrub to get the color on. It's It seems very nice so far. But again, first impression. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is PR. This is from Sigma. They sent me a bunch of their lipsticks. This is in the shade Temptation. And now that I'm looking at it I hope I don't already own this lipstick because watch me now have two of them for no reason when I could have totally passed this on this is what is on my lips today I also used it as blush today but what I did because this is a thing I've been doing lately is I topped it with a little bit of shine in the center of my lips and I just used this shade from the ColourPop palette and just kind of put it right there just to give me a little bit of a juicy factor so yeah, I will keep you posted, especially on this, because I want to use this more before I give a full, full review of this. Notable sales this week we have from Too Faced. They have a five-piece iconic mystery kit. It is $49 for a $144 value. That's available on their website now. Sephora has 20% off of full-sized fragrances. Use code FRAGRANCE20. Over at Kimchi Chic, 10 to 70% off site-wide. And then over at Ulta, in-store and online, $10 off of a $40 purchase or $20 off of a $100 purchase. The online codes are Cheer22 or Joy22. It does include prestige brands and fragrance, which is pretty freaking awesome. 
And finally, we have made it to our artist shout out of the week. And let me introduce you to Jonathan, who is insanely talented. I specifically showed this one first so you could see what he looks like before I get into the ones where his face is altered through the makeup. So let's zoom in and talk about this first look. And the way he described this is that he was going for the look like he just came out of the water. And I think he absolutely nailed it. It is so glowy and pretty. The eye look is gorgeous. I love how he brings that warm orange brown over to the side of his nose and, the, and to contour. It's beautiful. And I love the stone placement because it's so organized that it adds to the look rather than distracts from it. Really, really pretty. Let's go into the second look. This one, if you've seen the show, is called Wednesday. And I think he absolutely nailed it. And it really is the contour that brings it home here. The way he hollows out the cheeks and under the eyes and the rest of the look is just so perfect to match the show. And if you have not seen this show yet, I very much enjoyed it. I am watching it with my family and we're having a great time watching it. Highly recommend. Number three, last one, I eased you into the special effects and now I'm hitting you with it. <laughs> absolutely incredible. Uh, this look is on a whole completely different level. The eyes, of course, are so realistic. Like, what is even happening? But it goes beyond that to the rest of the look. It's just so cohesive. And I love the line work and the glitter placement. And even the black and brown lip stain kind of thing. Just so cool. I just appreciate it. I appreciate the artistry here. And there's so much to love over there. And one thing I love about Jonathan's account is that it is such a varied collection of different types of makeup looks. A lot of times you'll find people that just do special effects or just do really cool eye looks or just do really cool lip lip looks. He seems to be able to do everything, which I admire because I can't do any of it. <laughs> so I just followed him. I hope you will go check him out. The link to his Instagram is down below. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so much for watching. Just a heads up for the next two weeks for the Christmas holiday and then also New Year's holiday. I'm not 100% sure what is going to happen as far as what content is going to show up, whether we'll be doing chat. Definitely keep an eye out on the community tab. We're definitely not having What's Up in Makeup and chat because it is the Christmas holiday falling on the weekend. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with the following week. Uh, for the New Year's holiday, I am having my nephew come over and stay with us for about four days. He is two years old and I'm terrified because I haven't hung out with a two-year-old in uh, nine years. So, <laughs> so we will see how that goes and I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film. He is leaving on Friday so there is a chance that I could get what's up in makeup and everything together for you by the weekend but we will just have to see. I'm going to play it by ear. I would love to get it up for you. So definitely keep an eye out on my YouTube community tab. That's where I'm going to be announcing everything um, or you can just check back. It always shows up. Uh, What's the makeup shows up 9 15 a.m. Chat will start on those days if we do it at 10 a.m. Eastern time for both of those. If we do it, it will be at 10 a.m. But in the meantime, I want to take just a moment to thank very much the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. They have given me a wonderful, wonderful year of contributions to the show. They're kind of, like I've mentioned before, my safety net and to make sure that I've gotten everything. I do all of the research on my own and then I go over to the Facebook group and say, okay, my friends, what did I miss? A lot of the sales come from them. Sometimes the artist shout out comes from them. Uh, different products that I miss because I just didn't see them come from them. So I want to just take a minute to thank them for all of the contributions they've submitted for this whole year. I appreciate them so much. Sometimes you'll, you'll see every week some of the same names that contribute every week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whether you contribute a lot or just every once in a while, I appreciate you. Chat today is happening at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I do have a market this morning, so I will not be here at 10 a.m. We're going to have chat at 5 p.m. Hang out talk about makeup. Hopefully you can join us. If you can't, it's very easy to find on the replay if you're subscribed. All you got to do is go to your subscription feed. It should be right there for you. But if you're not subscribed, you can also find it by going to my channel page, clicking on my videos, and then clicking on the video titled live chat. Thank you for spending a year of What's Up in Makeup with me. I appreciate you. I really genuinely do because I know you can choose to watch so much right now and you're choosing What's Up in Makeup and that just means the world to me that you are invested in my passion project, which is talking about makeup news. So thank you for watching.
I appreciate you. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's Up in Makeup in case you missed it. But if you do need to go, it is no problem at all. I get it, it's a busy time of year. Thank you for watching as long as you did. And mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.